Good afternoon. This is Bill at uh, Carolina Readiness Supply in Waynesville, North Carolina. Just want to go over a uh, quick pack packaging procedure for bulk food. Uh, it's a simple process, but it has to be done correctly. What I'm doing today is packaging rice in a four gallon bucket. Four gallon bucket holds about 25 pounds. You can use this process for round buckets, three and a half gallon to seven gallon to five gallon, whatever the case. The procedure is still going to be the same. Generally when we package rice and beans, we are going to be using a 1500 cc oxygen absorber inside a Mylar bag. And in the food industry, these are called oxygen barrier bags. And they're specifically designed to inhibit oxygen transference from the exterior of the bag to the interior of the bag. So when you apply an oxygen absorber with the food product in the bag, you are going to have a chemical reaction from the oxygen absorber, which is iron oxide, with the oxygen in the bag. The absorber will absorb the oxygen, leaving nitrogen in the bag. So your food is stored in a nitrogen environment, which thus keeps it from oxidizing and going bad. So, first process. I always wear gloves when I package food, just so I don't touch food product. You will get the appropriate size Mylar bag for the bucket size. Insert the bag in the bucket. And then conform the bag to the bucket. And then simply, we have white bags here. Fill this bucket with the rice. That's my sample. Once we've completed filling the bucket with rice, the magic of cameras, I have a full bucket of rice here. Um, what you want to do and this size bucket holds 25 pounds. You want to leave an inch of head space from the lip of the bucket to your food product. That's just an average, but it allows you room for folding this bag up and getting the lid on without tearing the bag or causing any issues. So, what we want to do, our rice is in the bag. We want to seal this bag up almost all the way. Now I'm using a clamp sealer. Because I do hundreds of buckets. So the clamp sealer works very well. I have it sealed all the way to this point to where I can insert an oxygen absorber. You may also use a hair flat iron, a hair straightener. This is 20, 30 bucks compared to $125. So this will work, something you get at Walmart, very simple, or yard sale, whatever the case may be. You just heat this up hot enough to where when you apply it to the bag, it will seal in four or five seconds. So, we now have this bag sealed with this open to insert the oxygen absorber. Just a side note, 
This is a new bag of oxygen absorbers. This is one that I've opened and used and then resealed the bag. I leave them in the bag and just seal the mylar. This is a mylar bag without foil. So, when we open the oxygen absorbers, This is important. You take out an absorber, you fold this bag, fold the main bag closed, have someone hold it or put a weight on it so you don't expose that to oxygen. A new absorber is nice, soft, and pliable. We insert this into the bag, then we fold the bag. We're folding the bag in such a way as to remove all the residual oxygen that we can out of the bag. As you can see, I've flattened this out. I've got the residual oxygen out of this bag, and then I put the final seal on it. Okay, now, I've found over time The biggest mistake people make when packaging food is they don't squeeze this residual air out of the bag. They leave too much air in there and then the oxygen absorber can't overcome the environment. It just can't absorb that much oxygen and therefore it doesn't create a seal inside the bag. There's still remaining oxygen. The second mistake a lot of people make is they leave these absorbers exposed. So, I like to have all my food product lined up on all the buckets that I want to seal and have that all done first and sealed up 80-90% of the way on the bag and then the last step is inserting the oxygen absorber. Always, always keep this folded over when you're packaging. When you're done, you simply come back with your sealer you can seal your bag back right here. Now, I know a lot of folks do do mason jars for storing this. The only problem with that is you do run the risk if you don't get a seal on the jar, they could go bad on you and you not know it. But a rule of thumb, brand new, soft and pliable. If they've been exposed to oxygen over time, they will be hard and grainy. Now these bags, these are 4.3 mil bags. They're standard food industry for food packaging. I only move up to, uh, I do use a heavy 7 mil bag if I'm using uh, packaging sharp objects such as pasta, uh, sliced potatoes, dehydrated sliced potatoes, because they're sharp and I need a heavier bag for that. Even when I use a heavier bag, a lot of times I'll line the mylar with a paper bag to put the product in, just so we don't have any risk of puncture in these bags. One little pinhole and your bag will not seal. So, just a heads up on that. So, let's take a look and see right now what this bag will look like within 24 hours of you sealing it. I have some packaged in a barrel over here, so we'll take a look at that. So within, actually within six, eight hours, you're gonna start seeing this sucking in with the vacuum. But within 24 hours, your bag in the bucket will look just like this. You can see how this is sucked down and there's a total vacuum on that bag. So <clears throat> it's simple. This is a simple process, but if done incorrectly, it just doesn't work. So. But this would apply to most rice and beans. Uh, 1500 cc's will do the job. And uh, we're always here to help folks. So if we can be any help to y'all, 
uh, with your packaging needs and information, come by and see us. We're at 72 Montgomery Street in Waynesville, North Carolina, or we can be reached at 828-456-5310. We appreciate y'all. Thank you.